This is your End Time Prophecy Update with W. Dean Shook. Welcome to today's Prophecy News Update. I am your humble host, W. Dean Shook. Thank you for joining us today. We've got some very interesting news for you. We're going to start with a story from Newsmax. Obama claims he's the most accomplished president ever. In spite of a record number of Americans receiving food stamps, a 7.3% unemployment rate, and an embarrassing launch of his signature health care program, President Barack Obama says his administration has been the most productive in history. At a private Democratic fundraiser in Beverly Hills, California, Obama touted himself as Democratic leaders for surpassing the likes of Abraham Lincoln and Franklin D. Roosevelt, who respectively ended slavery and led the country through the Great Depression and World War II. We've accomplished as much, if not more, than any time in our history, saving an economy from a Great Depression, revitalizing an auto industry that's producing better cars and has come roaring back like nobody believed, doubling our exports, drastically reducing our dependence on foreign oil, doubling fuel efficiency standards, doubling our production of clean energy, reducing the pace of our carbon emissions, ending the war in Iraq, about to end the war in Afghanistan, recentering our fight against terrorism with respect to our values and our ideals, expanding access to college for all children across this country, ending Don't Ask, Don't Tell, making sure that we're the nation that everybody could be proud of, where everyone has a fair shot regardless of their sexual orientation, as well as pushing for equal pay for women, reinstituting research on stem cells. Obama gushed in a text to remarks released by the White House. He went on to pat the administration on the back for constructing the toughest set of sanctions ever against Iran. Now He briefly mentioned Obamacare remarking that he's proud as I've ever been on the work we did to make sure that this country, if it gets sick, you don't go bankrupt, that you can get the health care you need, adding that it actually started to work pretty well. Meanwhile, food stamp recipients are at a historic high. 47 million people or one-sixth of the country, the Washington Post reports, more than 30% increase since the National Bureau of Economic Research declared the recession was over in 2009. Many experts have criticized the recent deal with Iran as weak, and the botched Obamacare has faced repeated missteps. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see some follow-up stories that are in the same news as this one. And there's also a story about uh, the next crash is brewing. Central banks around the world are pumping trillions into the economy. The goal is to stimulate growth, but their actions are also driving up prices in the real estate and equities market. The question is no longer whether there will be a crash, but when. When 42-year-old hedge fund manager Mark Spenskel went to forget about his high-stakes business for a while. He heads to the goat farm he and his wife Amy purchased in the hills of Michigan. There he produces cheese according to environmentally sustainable methods because he views modern agriculture with its large-scale pesticide use and automated factory farms as a degenerate. In fact, he says, factory farming is an ideal metaphor for the economy. In his view, the world's financial and equity markets are so dysfunctional, and what happened there is unhealthy and anything but sustainable. As a money manager, he also opted for an alternative business model of sorts. He's betting on a crash. For his customers... His multi-million dollar fund acts as an insurance policy against the next meltdown in the financial system. 
Now, when the market's doing well, they lose modest amounts of money, but they cash in as soon as it takes a nosedive. Even when all the investments are going up in smoke, the hedge fund manager has made a lot of money in the past with this prognosis, and he's convinced that substantial turbulence is in the cards for our future. The setup is there. And they're ready for it. He says it's about to happen. Well, you know, the Fed also has created a huge global bubble. Because here's another story that says the actions of the Federal Reserve have created a massive bubble, not just in U.S. stock prices, but in a variety of assets all across the world. This, according to David Stockman, who serves as a director of the Office of Management and Budget under Ronald Reagan. He said the Fed is exporting this policy worldwide. Stockman said, referring to the Federal Reserve's asset purchasing program, central banks all over the world have been massively expanding their balance sheets. As a result of that, they're bubbling everything. Asset values are aggravated everywhere. It's only a question of time before the central banks lose control and a panic sets in when people realize that the values are massively overstated. The issue, says Stockman, is that central banks around the world have followed the Fed's foolish lead for either good reason or defending their own currency and their trade and their exchange rate or because they're replicating a the Fed's erroneous policies. Either way, central banks have been massively expanding their balance sheets, which has reduced interest rates on government bonds. It increased the amount of money on fixed assets. Stockman, who in the, is the recent author of The Great Deformation, The Corruption of Capitalism in America, says that it takes little digging to discover that assets are overextended This is a financial asset bubble, and you can see it in our valuation as you look at it. Stockman said on Tuesday um, when he interviewed on Futures Now that Russell 2000 is hitting another peak today. It's trading at 75 times reported traded earnings. That makes no sense. It's up 43% in the last year. But earnings on the Russell 2000 companies have not increased at all. It's up 230% from the bottom. Mainstream America's not doing that well. In fact, Art Cashin, director of the floor operations for UBS, made a similar point on the same episode called Futures Now. He said this market, the whole economy, has a kind of split personality. Wall Street's doing a record amount, yet your brother-in-law can't find a job. Yet while Cushing doesn't call for a Fed-induced bubble or creating the, the situation instead, the miracle of managers in all the major corporations doing more with less, he says that's what's really doing it. Well, st- they say that this is dangerous. We're in a dangerous financial system. And there could be a new deal to keep U.S. troops in Afghanistan for 10 more years. A draft of the potentially costly security agreement between the U.S. and Afghanistan shows that some troops may stay on the ground long after the current deal, which was meant to be out by 2014, expires at the end of the year. NBC News reporter Richard Engel obtained a copy of the Security and Defense Cooperation Agreement between the United States and the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. A 25-page draft dated July 25, 2013, that sets the stage for continued development for the majority of the U.S. troops to come home at the end of 2014, if signed by both countries, U.S. military operations in Afghanistan could continue until 2024. Taken as a whole, the document describes a basic U.S.-Afghan exchange. 
The Afghans would allow Washington to operate military bases to train Afghan forces and conduct counterterrorism operations against al-Qaeda after the current mission ends in 2014. For that foothold in this volatile mountain region wedged between Pakistan and Iran, the United States would agree to sustain and equip Afghan large security forces, which the government in Kabul currently cannot afford. The deal, according to the text, would take effect January 1st, 2015, and shall remain in force till the end of 2024 and beyond. It could be terminated by either Washington or Kabul, two years' notice. So how is Washington handling all of these uh, shutdowns and um, health care? And, well, here's, here's how they're handling it. Apparently, they're running up the tab. The State Department bought $180,000 in liquor before the last shutdown. Yes, I said liquor. While the rest of the government prepared to shut down this last fall, the State Department was busy stocking up on embassy liquor supplies. In September, the final month of the fiscal year, the State Department spent about $180,000, racked up a total of more than 400000 for the whole year, three times the entire liquor tab for all of 2008. The liquor bill, split among purchase orders placed at embassies around the world, included some major last-minute pre-shutdown splurges. Here's some of them. 5,625 in gratuity wine at the embassy in Rio de Janeiro on September 29th, followed by 5,925 in gratuity whiskey on the day the shutdown began. 22,416 in wine at the embassy at Tokyo. Uh, just for your information, bottles of alcohol are seen lining the shelves of, of liquor stores in August 31st, 2009. According to the Associated Press, these are State Department liquor stores. U.S. embassies have long served alcohol at diplomatic events under Democratic and Republican administrations alike, and in good econ- economic times as well as bad. But the booze bill has risen sharply since 2008, according to the Federal Government Procurement Database, which includes a specific code enabling the public to track alcoholic beverage purchase orders. Those records showed the State Department bought $415,000 worth of alcohol in fiscal 2012, which was 25% more than the $331,000 spent in 2011, and more than triple the $118,000 spent in 2008. My goodness, is that our diplomatic policy, to, to get other countries drunk? Well, saving a few hundred thousand dollars won't do much to reduce the government's $17 trillion debt. But in any case, in taxpayer dollars spent on wine and whiskey deserves close scrutiny in tough fiscal times, says Dave Williams, president of the nonprofit Taxpayer Protection Alliance Watchdog Group. The department went on buying binge just before the partial shutdown. This is what taxpayers don't understand, Mr. Williams said. You have looming government shutdown, but then you have a use-it-or-lose-it mentality where someone is spending tens of thousands of dollars just because they have to. Where are they getting all this money? Well, the IRS is finalizing rules on an additional Medicare tax. The Internal Revenue Service has released the final regulations for the 0.9% additional Medicare tax that was imposed as part of the Affordable Care Act. The final regulation that was released last week more or less adhered to the proposed regulations that were released last year for the additional hospital insurance tax on income above threshold amounts usually referred to as the Additional Medicare Income Tax, or the Medicare 
thresholds. Usually, this tax is a proposed guideline, but the tax took effect January 1st of this year, and it applies to wages, compensation, self-employment income, thresholds that, that are ridiculous. Now, I'm going to give you some of this. You need to pay close attention to this. They also released final regulation last week on another tax that was included in the Affordable Care Act, the 3.8% net investment income tax. This 0.9% additional uh, Medicare tax. Now, <clears throat> stay with me on this. You're going to have to pay close attention or you're going to miss something here. All right, here's here's how it works. Tax This tax applies to wages, railroad retirement compensation, self-employment income over a certain threshold. Employers are responsible for withholding the tax and wages on Railroad Retirement Tax Act compensation in certain circumstances. The only major change from the proposed regulations that were issued last December is that the proposed tax regulation had provided that if employers deduct less than the current amount of additional Medicare tax, it's nonetheless liable for the correct amount of tax that was required to withhold. Unless the employee pays the tax, the proposed regulation also provides that if an employee subsequently pays the tax that the employer failed to deduct, the tax would not be collected from the employer. The final regulation, however, further says that an employer is not relieved of its liability for payment of additional tax if it's required to be withheld unless it can show the tax has been paid by the employee. The employer's use form 4669, Statement of Employment Relief, or Form 4670 result from the relief from payment of tax withheld on the same form for requesting additional income tax withholding relief to request relief from paying additional Medicare tax that has already been paid by the employee. The final regulation has to be proposed regulations to comply with formatting requirements of the Office of the Federal Registrar. Did you get all of that? Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Pay attention. Stay tuned to In Time Prophecy News and In Time Prophecy Update. We'll try to make sense of some of this gobbledygook. I'm your host, W. Dean Shook. Thank you for being here. You can get these full stories and more at WDeanShook.com. That's WDeanShook.com.